Welcome back. We are working on a new unit today. I'm so happy that you made it through Brust, Bean, and Kelly to finally return to me, the one and only Sullivan. Here I am to help you, and today we're going to talk about something that's really pretty cool, sequences, all right? So let's start with the sequence right here. This right here is Mr. Kelly. Look at him. What a what a great guy. Looks like he's got his act together. A little bit cheesy smile, but this is the guy who knows what's going on. So that's the first step in this sequence. Oh, and now we're... Okay, now this is a little bit creepier, Mr. Kelly, right? He's moved on. Maybe two steps creepier. He's got this guitar, trying to play guitar, maybe make some friends. Who knows? Then he's going on. Oh, oh, yeah. This is even creepier, Mr. Kelly. This is not working at all for me. It actually scares me all. The smile has turned real creepy, real scary. And last but not least, we have Pirates of the Caribbean, Kelly. Um, as you can tell, again, it gets creepier and creepier the further we go that, in that sequence. So let's talk about sequences first, just a second if we can. All right, example number one. Start off really, really hard here. What are the next two numbers in this sequence? If my sequence is 1, 3, 5, 7, what would the next two numbers be? Well, it appears as though I add 2 each time. So 7 plus 2 would be 9. 9 plus 2 would be 11, correct? That, that wasn't that difficult, was it? And you're going to find out that a lot of these aren't that difficult today. The hardest part about today's lesson, probably for some of you, is going to be the notation of how I dictate the sequences here in a few minutes. And I'm really sorry about that, but in the long run, it's going to help you tremendously. So just think about that. All right, let's try example number two here. Oh, example number two, 7531. Well, those are the exact same numbers, 75. They're the exact same numbers we have, right? So what are the next two numbers here? Well, they're not exactly the same. The next number is the here I'm subtracting to. So in this case, 1 minus 2 is going to be negative 1. Negative 1 minus 2 is going to be negative 3. So there is a difference, right? The numbers in this, this sequence are different. How are they different? Well, this, the numbers exactly are the same, but the difference is the order of the sequence. So does it matter what order they go in? Yes, it totally matters. So when we talk about what differentiates it, order matters, okay? The order of the sequence totally, totally matters. And to prove my point, let's go back this way. If we start off and I told you that this was the youngest picture of Mr. Kelly, yeah, he's in college here and he's, he's obviously going through a phase. But oh, look at this. He grows up just a little bit here. He's still immature, but he's gro oh, growing up a little bit more. He's taking up a musical instrument. It's still a little bit creepy, but he's growing up. And then we go back one more step. Ah, there he is. The pride of Kaiser Slaughter in high school, Mr. Kelly, right there. See, the order matters. If we go this way, it's totally creepy. But going the other way, it's just him growing up. All right, let's take a look at this one here. So now I've arranged this a little bit differently, right? The last time what we would have done is we would have written the sequence like this. 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Now, we can do that. We can organize it as a table. I wrote it this way because I want you to understand something. Sometimes I'm going to ask you, like, what is the fifth term of this sequence? So I wrote it like this because it's easy to see right now. The fifth term is 16. So that term, the fifth one, is 16. If I wanted to know what is the sixth term, I would say it is 32. All right? So how do I get this? Well, let's take a look. How do I go from 1 to 2? Well, I could add 1, right? From 2 to 4, that's adding. Well, adding, I'm not adding the same thing here, am I? What else could I do? From 1 to 2, I could multiply by 2. 2 to 4, I could multiply by 2. 4 to 8, I could multiply by 2. It looks like I'm multiplying by 2. So I'm taking my term and I'm multiplying by 2. All right? That's not that difficult, is it? All right, figuring out what those terms were, not that difficult. So I know what you're thinking. Why make it any harder, Sullivan, than you have to? Because it's math. That's what we do here, right? All right, now I want you to think. This is the exact same one we just had, isn't it? I wrote it a little bit differently. So let's say this 
Now we're going to call our sequences A. So I wrote it like this. A sub 1. And what does this A sub 1 mean? A sub 1 means the term, the first term, in fact, because the first, the, the 1. So I could say A sub 6 is, A sub 6 would be what? 32. Correct? All right. In fact, I could say A sub n. What would happen if I put an n here? Well, that would mean any term, right? So if I want to know the term at any point in that sequence, I would say A sub n. And that would give me any term. All right? So this is one way we're going to use notation to denote the term number. So the term number at A sub 4, the fourth term in this sequence A is 8. Okay? All right. And then now we're going to think of it another way, too. And why would I ever do something two ways to you? Well, because it's good to think about things a couple of different, multiple representations. So this is A. So now I'm going to label it like this. I want to know a of 1. And I say it A of 1. This is not A times 1. It is not A times 1. It is A of 1. What is the term in sequence A at 1? Well, it is 1. So this would be A, excuse me, A of 2. This would be A of 3. A of 4. A of 5. And if I said, what is A of 7? Well, we could find A of 7 because we know A of 6 is 32. Multiply it by again, A of 7 would be 64. All right? And if I want to know any term, I don't know what number term I want. I want to find A of N. Okay? A of N. So we have two ways to look at these things. Now, please understand a sub 5 is read the same way of A of 5, all right? This is the same thing. It's just a little bit different notation, and I know, I know poor you kiddos have to learn two things. I am so sorry, but I believe you can do it, all right? All right. Remember, this does not mean what? It does not mean A times 5. It means A of 5, or the value of that sequence at the fifth term. All right, so example three, we're given a graph here, and we want to know what are the first t uh, six terms of this graph. So the first term, all right, and notice now I used F instead of A, right? It doesn't matter. I could call it G. I could call it. So this time I'm telling us our sequence is F. So for example, F of one is what? Looks like it's zero, right? Then the next term, f of 2, would be 3. f of 3 would be 6. f of 4 would be 9. All right, and that's all we have on this graph, so we need the first 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4. What are we doing here? It looks like I'm adding 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? So those are our first six terms of this sequence. It says, what is f of 10? So we need to add 3 a few more times, right? So we go 15 plus 3 is 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. 21 plus 3 is 24. 24 plus 3 is 27. So the 10th term of the sequence f is 27. All right? Now it wants us to find the 15th term of the sequence. The 15th term of the sequence, not 15 times the sequence. The 15th term of the sequence. So 27 plus 3 is 30. Plus 3 is 33. Plus 3 is 36. Plus 3 is 39. Plus 3 is 42. All right? Are you allowed to use calculators? Why not? All right? If I stop you, I hope you can add that without a calculator, but you may need to go for it. All right. So describe how you go from one term to the next using complete sentences. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. It's real important that you use complete sentences, all right? You need to express your thoughts really clearly and precisely. 
and I am not an English teacher, so I'll do my best. So what did we do from one term to the next? What did we do? We added three, right? From one term to the next in the sequence, we added three. Easy enough, right? All right. Describe how the graph changes using complete sentences. All right, let's take, let's take a look at this graph. Well, how does it change? Well, first of all, does this rate of change change at all? It always goes up three, doesn't it? So the rate of change constantly goes up three. Let's write that out. Um, the rate of change of the graph goes up constantly three. All right. It forms a linear graph. Awesome. All right, let's try another one. Ooh, now we got to graph this first. So consider this sequence, 1, 4, 16, 64, and 256. Now when you graph, guys, a couple of things I want to point out. Um, the first thing about graphing is, you know, do your best, okay? Don't feel like you have to be perfect. So for example, I'm going to go to, this is my first term, and this is B, so this is B of 1 is at 1. So 1, I'm going to go up 1. Now, not 0, but pretty close, so we're going to put a point right here. All right, the second term of B of 2 is at 4, just a little bit higher. I know, is that perfect? Nah. The third one, 16. We'll see, these are each 10, so 16 is going to be up here. A little bit then we go oh 64 here's 60 and a little bit more so 64 and then 256 holy cannoli 256 is gonna be way up here almost off the graph isn't it all right so describe how you go from one term net to the next using complete sentences well what do we do from one term to the next how do I go from 1 to 4, 4 to 16, 16 to 64? Do I add the same thing every time? Sure doesn't look like it, does it? But it looks like I multiply. I multiply the previous term ooh, by 4 to get the next term. Pretty fancy. All right, so now it's asking us, what is B of 8? Remember, the 8th term of this sequence B. So we're saying this is our sequence B, so what is the 8th term? We know this is the 6th term, so this is B sub 6. So we have to multiply it two more times. So multiply B sub 6 uh, by 2. Oh, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is B5. So B6 multiplied by 2, and I get 512. B7 is 1,024, and B8 would be 2,048. Again, if you're not great at multiplying, use a calculator. I'd rather you get it right than get it wrong. All right? What is B of 10? What is the 10th term? So I'm at 8. Multiply that by 2, I get 4,096. Multiply that by 2, I get 8,192. Perfect. Graph the terms of the sequence as an ordered pair. Oh, holy can only. We already did that. Now, the other one, the thing I want to point out is I use points. Sometimes, you know, if you want to use these X's, uh, I know on the homework, I ask you to graph a couple of things, or excuse me, on the practice, a couple of things on the same graph. So maybe one is points and one is X's. All right. So let's see. Describe how the graph changes using complete sentences. Ooh, this one is way different than the last one, right? Because last time, if we look, it changed the same every time. The rate of that change was the same every time. Is the rate of change the same here every time? No. In fact, the rate of change gets bigger every time, doesn't it? So let's write that. The rate of change, does it, in it increases, right? The rate of change increases each time. In fact, it gets more dramatic well, that's, that's awkward. It increases more dramatically as you go. All right? And what kind of graph is this? You guys remember what it, when it, that rate of change increases like that? That's going to be an exponential. 
forms an exponential graph. Awesome. All right, here's what I'd like you to do. Right now, I want you to try this one by yourself just as much as you can without any help from me, all right? So again, this will be the first term. So let's call this a of 1. This would be a sub 2, a sub 3, a of 4. Again, remember the notation is the same. So I want you to right now pause the video and try this as much as you can. Yo, you didn't pause the video. Pause the video. You got to try it. All right, let's take a look. All right, so a sub 1. Describe how you go from one term to the next. Well, let's write this down. The first term is 1. There's one dot. Then there is four dots. Then there are nine dots. And then there's 16 dots. If we look at this, I could multiply by 4, but I'm not multiplying by 4 here. I'm adding 3, right? Then I'm adding 5. Ooh, I'm adding odd numbers. Adding 7. So I'm going to add 9. I'll get the next one. Add 11. Get the next one, right? So 16 plus 9, 25 plus 11, 36. So how am I going from one term to the next? Ooh, the trickiest part of this may be just learning out how to write this. Um, I am adding odd numbers starting with 3 and increasing each time. All right? Something like that, right? That's how I'm going from one to the next. Okay? All right, so what is a sub 6? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, we already got a sub 6. It is 36. Awesome. A sub 7. So if I added 11, my next one would have to be add 13. 36 plus 13 would be 49. All right, let's graph these. So our first, 1, 1, right here. Boom. 2, 4. Well played. 3, 9. Very good. 4, 16. Well done. 5, 25. Yeah, let's add them all up here, right? And then 6, 36. And 7, 49. Describe how the graph changes. Now, is the rate of change constant? No, in fact, we know exactly what happens to the rate of change, don't we? The rate of change increases slightly, doesn't it? Is it dramatically increasing? This dramatically increases. It's not slight at all. But this one is just slightly increasing. So I think that's a very important distinction. Let's write that. The rate of change increases slightly from one term to the next. Now, this one we may not know, but it actually, it's not exponential, is it? Exponential is when we multiply. This forms a quadratic. All right? Now, are we going to penalize you if you don't know the quadratic or the exponential? Not yet. We will, though. You should start to figure these out. You should definitely know what a exponential looks like. You should definitely know what a linear relationship looks like, right? Linear, line. Okay? All right. The last thing I want to leave you with today is one of my favorite quotes. Be the change you want to see in the world. And I'm pretty sure that quote is from Gandhi, all right? Be the change. What change do you want to see? Do you want to be positive? Do you want more positivity in this world? Go out and be more positive. Do you want to challenge people? Do you want people to grow more? Go out and challenge people. Challenge yourself. Be that change, all right? Do you want more people to express gratitude? Go out. Express more gratitude in the world. So for now, I'm just going to tell you this. Be the change, kids. Be the change. Till next time, be the change.